Former President Donald Trump cannot make disparaging comments about prosecutors or potential witnesses in his federal election interference case. That decision, announced yesterday by a U.S. District Judge, Tanya Chutkin, prosecutors originally asked for a more comprehensive gag order, but Judge Chutkin refused to put restriction on Trump's statements about Washington, D.C., criticisms, criticisms of the government or the Department of Justice. She did impose a restriction on all parties, including Trump, banned them from making or reposting any statements publicly targeting the special counsel or his staff, as well as court staff members or personnel. In her ruling, Judge Chotkin rejected Trump's team's argument that he should be allowed to say what he wants because he's running for president. Quote, Mr. Trump can certainly claim that he's being unfairly prosecuted, but I cannot imagine any other criminal case in which a defendant is permitted to call the prosecutor deranged or a thug, and I will not permit it here simply because the defendant is running a political campaign. Trump responded at a campaign rally in Iowa last night. They think the only way they can catch me is to stop me from speaking. They want to take away my voice. And a judge uh, gave a gag order today. Did you hear that on speech? Which I believe is totally unconstitutional what she did. A judge gave a gag order. A judge doesn't like me too much. Her whole life is not liking me. Mm, Trump says he will appeal the gag order ruling. Okay. Let's bring in former U.S. attorney, senior FBI official Chuck Rosenberg, also with us. MSNBC contributor, our buddy Mike Barnacle, and former White House Director of Communications to President Obama, Jennifer Palmieri. She's co-host of the MSNBC podcast, How to Win 2024. Uh, so, Chuck, let's just start right at the top there with something the former president said. Gag orders are constitutional, are they not? They are, if they're narrowly tailored, uh, Willie, and this one seems to be. So I could imagine a gag order that goes too far. I could imagine a gag order that doesn't go far enough. I think Judge Chutkin here, you know, hit the happy middle. I think the harder question, though, is what happens when he almost inevitably violates the gag order? It's one thing to write one. Judges are used to having criminal defendants in front of them, and having you, and they're used to having these defendants abide court orders. Even criminals can conform their behavior in front of most federal judges. I think the harder question is, inevitably, when he violates the gag order, what next? So, Chuck, let's take that speech last night, that event, for example. He specifically went after the judge, the gag orders about the prosecutors themselves. Where is the line on all of this? We know he won't be able to control himself up in front of a crowd. So let's say he violates the gag order, goes after the prosecutor or witnesses in this federal case. This applies to the federal election case. Um, what happens next? Right. So a judge under those circumstances, Willie, would have a bunch of options, but they're not all easy to implement. She could reprimand him. She could essentially reissue the order and remind him of his obligations. That's at sort of the low end of the spectrum. She could find him. She could even revoke his bond and imprison him, although that would uh, introduce a host of logistical and technical difficulties because he has a Secret Service detail and he's running for president. Where on that spectrum she lands, if he violates it, I don't know. She may not even know. This is, you know, we use the word unique a lot. And frankly, I think it tends to be overused. This is unique. She sees him as a defendant running for president. Uh, he thinks of himself as someone running for president who also happens to be a defendant. They're coming at it from very different directions. And so when he inevitably violates her order in some way, I think the hard question is, what does she do next? And I don't really know the answer. It's hard to imagine putting Mr. Trump, while he's a candidate, running for president in prison. Um, yeah, but Chuck, I, like, I, go ahead. Chuck, let's, let, let, let's, make, let, let's make this simple. Let's make this simple. So, uh, I, I understand he's running for president. Uh, political speech is protected. I uh, understand he has a right to campaign. Uh, she said he's even allowed to say the process is rigged if he wants to. At the same time, as the judge stated in her order, she cannot imagine any other trial where you would have a defendant allowed to run out calling prosecutors thugs, 
I can't imagine any criminal case in which a defendant is permitted to call the prosecutor deranged or a thug, and I will not permit it here simply because the defendant is running for a political campaign. So, yes, this is unique. What is not unique is the fact is this is he's a criminal defendant, and she's exactly right. He cannot. He cannot. I, because no criminal defendant that I've ever heard of has been able to attack uh, members of the court, officers of the court, the way Donald Trump is. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So a couple of things are simple, Joe. You're right. Uh, he's a criminal defendant. She's right. The order she issued is narrowly tailored and designed to accomplish all those purposes you just explained. That said, what does she do when he violates it? And I don't know that there's a lot of other data points for us, frankly, Joe. I mean, there aren't a lot of cases like this. I can't think of any. And so, yeah, in some ways it's simple. He's a criminal defendant and he has to abide her order. Fine, good, got it. What so, happens so when- So let me just ask you, well, again, I'm sorry. He's, a, he's running for resident, that's awesome. Under, Amer uh, under the United States of America, I mean, under our laws, we believe that nobody's above the law. What would happen if in a case that you were trying, any case that you were trying, where a criminal defendant so don't go out and call us thugs, and then he goes out on the court steps, holds a press conference, and the defendant calls him thugs. I don't know where you practiced. I can tell you where I practiced, the judge would call him back in, hold him in the contempt of court, and throw him in jail. Where I practiced, if somebody violated a court order, the judge would haul him back in, hold them in contempt, and sanction them maybe find them, maybe put them in jail, but they would certainly sanction them. You and I agree on that, Joe. There's a problem here, though. It's much more difficult than that. And so I take it that, you know, we all ought to try and find the simple answer. I don't know that there is. First of all, how do you put somebody with a Secret Service detail in prison? Second, because the First Amendment absolutely protects political speech, Tell me precisely what the line is between political speech, valid criticism, let's say, of Mr. Biden or the Justice Department, and speech that violates her order. I just don't know. Maybe I'm not smart enough to figure out where that line clearly lies. Well, I think, I think you're extraordinarily smart. Maybe it's just because I'm a simple country lawyer that just fell off of a turnip truck outside of 30 Rock, but it seems to me that you have, uh, they get called back in. You don't, you don't create one set of rules for Donald Trump. There's no ambiguity. And another set of rules for the other 330 million people. In. I understand it's a complicated issue and it has to be acted upon with nuance, but if he continues to attack and insult members of the court, I'm quite confident that John Roberts Supreme Court will rule with the judge that there has to be an orderly procedure inside that courtroom if there is somebody that is constantly attacking the validity of the court and trying to undermine a federal judge and other officers of the court, I don't think the Roberts court would see it as that complicated so long as it is narrowly tailored, tailored to the contours of actually uh, running the case uh, in, in a manageable, uh, professional way. And, and if he steps out of line, you sanction him. And if he steps out of line, sanction him again. If he steps out of line the third time, I think every federal judge would throw him in jail, regardless of who he is. Put an ankle bracelet on him and put him in Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. yeah. With his uh, look, security I, detail. I, I don't think we're really saying something very different here. I agree with you, Joe and Mika. If he continues to flout a judge's order, and that order is narrowly tailored to ensure an orderly proceeding in her courtroom, yeah, appellate courts, Supreme Court, they're going to back her because judges have the right and the obligation, by the way, to run their court in an orderly and efficient manner. That's not the hard part. The hard part is determining what speech violates her order. Let's say, as he did in Iowa last night, that he criticizes the Justice Department or President Biden. That seems to be fair game. If he goes after witnesses, that seems to be um, in violation of her order. It's almost inevitable, Joe and Mika, that he's going to do something like that. He's making money off of it. His polls are going up because of it. Why wouldn't he? He's never shown an ability to conform his behavior. Okay, at what point does she simply fine him? At what point does she find that he needs in Mika's, and, and Mika's right, you know, 
Maybe an ankle bracelet is an alternative to uh, imprisonment, incarceration, pending trial. But I don't think these are easy decisions for any federal judge. And I don't know what the triggering event will be. I just fear that there will be one.